The following is the English translation of Pastor Moen Wu's teaching on the book of Genesis chapters 43 and 44, translated by Bryson. Read the Bible every day so you will be full of faith. Today we're going to take a look at Genesis chapter 43 and 44. In chapter 43, we see that Jacob is finally able to let go. This is not easy for Jacob. In the process of doing this, Jacob says, I don't have anything now. Why is God still doing this to me? But if you look closely, does he really have nothing now? During the famine, does he really have nothing now? This reveals something in our heart. Sometimes God wants us to let go. Sometimes he wants us to deal with ways we were immature 10, even 20 years ago. The reason God wants to deal with this is to heal us, break off shame, and for us to live holy before him. In chapter 43, verse 1 to 7, there is no more food left. So Jacob says, Go again, buy us a little food. But Judah says to him, The man solemnly warned us, saying, You shall not see my face unless your brother is with you. If you will send our brother with us, we will go out and buy you food. Here we see that Judah is saying, Father, I am willing to go, but are you willing to let go of Benjamin? Are you willing to let him go? And Judah said to Israel his father, Send the boy with me, and we will arise and go, that we may live and not die both we and you and also our little ones. Verse 9, I will be a pledge of his safety. From my hand you shall require him. If I do not bring him back to you and set him before you, then let me bear the blame forever. We see that Reuben had actually said this before. Simeon in this case had no response because he is currently imprisoned in Egypt. Judah starts to speak, Father, if I do not bring him back, you shall require him from my hand and I will bear the blame forever. This brother Judah has repented in the past, Judah was very deceitful. He also hurt Joseph, also his situation with Tamar. He visited a prostitute, but he didn't tell anyone. And then three months later, when he found out Tamar was pregnant, he said, Bring her out and let her be burned. He thought he was standing in a high place of holiness to judge others. But in the end, Judah says that Tamar is more righteous than he is. So many years have passed. Has Judah matured? Has he grown up? Does Judah understand God's heart? Does he understand his father's heart? Let's continue reading. If we had not delayed, we would now have returned twice. In verse 11, Then their father Israel said to them, If it must be so, then do this. Take some of the choice fruits of the land in your bags and carry a present down to the man, a little balm and a little honey, gum, myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. Take double the money with you to give those people. Does Jacob really have nothing now? He said, I don't have anything now. Why is this happening to me? I don't have anything now. Why is God still demanding these things from me? Jacob had no choice but to let go of his most precious son. Reuben sinned. He is no longer the eldest. Levi and Simeon were both so ruthless, and now Simeon is not here. And also my most beloved son, Joseph. I don't know if he is alive, since I heard he is, was torn apart by wild beasts. And now you want my most loved and favorite son, Benjamin, to go with you? God, what do you want me to do? Many times you see God moves and takes away many things in our life. And we see that God's hand is really detailed. Detailed to a point where you think you don't have anything left. But in reality, you actually still have everything. During the famine, Jacob had no food. But did he really have no food? He had honey, gum, myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds. So why did they have to go buy food? God had to reveal the needs of the environment he was in to force Jacob to step into his calling and destiny. The promise that God gave to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob still had to be fulfilled. It wasn't just about blessing a single person. It's not just about Joseph receiving the blessing. It's not just about Jacob maturing. It's about Jacob's whole family going to Egypt to become a tribe, a whole nation. Only then would God's will be completely fulfilled. When Joseph became prime minister, did this mean that his calling or destiny was realized now? No. Joseph became prime minister for his family to be able to step onto their calling and destiny. Jacob matured and grew. Did he step into his calling and destiny? It was not enough. God wanted his whole family clan. God wanted to deal with everything he held on to. He wanted Jacob to fully let it go. God wanted Jacob to be mature to a point so that one day he could bless Pharaoh. This is the way God works. Jacob's maturation in Hebron, God wanted to push him up a further step so that when he went to Pharaoh Ramsey's place, he could become even more mature and that he could become even more mature in the land of Goshen. So the brothers were brought into Joseph's house and as previously mentioned, they brought an abundance of things into his house. 
But if you look at verse 18, what is their heart attitude? And the men were afraid because they were brought to Joseph's house. And they said, It is because of the money which was replaced in their sacks the first time that we are brought in, so that he may assault us and fall upon us to make us servants and seize our donkeys. What are you thinking? You are going to buy food. You don't have anything, so you came over to ask for food. And yet you are worried about whether others will seize your donkeys and take your money and so on? Dear family, many times we have this attitude towards others. When we have the heart attitude of an orphan, many times we think other people's love toward us will be the cause of our trouble. I cannot fully trust other people. I cannot trust those who truly love me. I cannot really trust those who, under God's hand, really want to help me fulfill God's calling for me. If you meet people like Joseph who seem to be testing you, or your leaders who seem to be testing you, wanting to help you fulfill God's calling for you, many times we act just like the brothers in verse 18. Oh, he has evil plans for me to make us servants and seize my donkeys. Dear family, this hard attitude really makes it hard for us to mature and grow. Joseph didn't care about these things. He prepared this food for them to enjoy. Over the course of this meal, he cries many times. This really isn't an outpouring of love. This is how God is toward us. God loves us so much to the point that he doesn't give it to us now. He loves us so much with a patient love for us to experience testing and trials and hardships. Verse 34. Portions were taken to them from Joseph's table, but Benjamin's portion was five times as much as any of theirs, and they drank and were merry with him. So much favor on them, but this was to prepare them for a greater testing. In chapter 44, when the time of testing comes, Benjamin becomes the main character of the story. Joseph employs a strategy to try to keep Benjamin behind. The whole time this is happening, there is nothing recorded about what Benjamin said. We only see the conversation between Judah and Joseph. Judah says, I am willing to stay behind and become your servant in place of Benjamin. Starting from verse 1 to 8, they are enjoying an abundance of food. They are feasting and so happy. When they are going to go home, Simeon is back now. Benjamin is here and well. It's wonderful. Everyone's back now. But there would be a greater test. When these 11 brothers go back home, would they treat their father well? Would they treat Benjamin well? So Joseph tells them, don't quarrel on the way home. From Joseph's testing, we can see he is trying to test what is in their hearts. Verse 8, Behold, the money that we found in the mouths of our sacks we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Whichever of your servants is found with it shall die, and we also will be my Lord's servants. And Joseph says, Let it be as you say, he who is found with it shall be my servant, and the rest of you shall be innocent. They searched, and the cup was found in Benjamin's sack, which was Joseph's plan. Sometimes you might think, How am I so unlucky? How do I just happen to be picked by others to do this, to do that? I keep on getting picked. For example, there might be a task that everyone has to complete. Everyone is doing their work, but the boss specifically singles me out. Dear family, God has a wonderful plan for you. In those situations, God wants to see your heart. Do you want to be like Judah? Rise up. Don't fight only for your own interests, but for the interests of others. Fight for what is on our Heavenly Father's heart. Let's take a look what Judah said. This chapter specifically focuses on Judah. Judah and his brothers. Not Reuben and his brothers. Notice this. Verse 14. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there. They fell before him to the ground. The dream that God gave Joseph 22 years ago is now being fulfilled. God's timing is the best. Are you willing to wait? Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that a man like me can indeed practice divination? Only the man in whose hand the cup was found, Benjamin, shall be my servant. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. In verse 18, we see Judah speak up. Then Judah went up to him and said, Oh, my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. My Lord asked his servants, saying, Have you a father or a brother? And we said to my Lord, We have a father, an old man, and a younger brother, the child of his old age. You said, Bring him down to me. We said to my Lord, The boy cannot leave his father. For if he should leave his father, his father would die. In verse 25, he continues, We came to buy food, and we told our father we must bring our brother. Our father's response was, No, if you take this one also from me, and harm happens to him, you will bring down my gray hairs and evil to Sheol. Verse 30, Judas has a key point. My father's life is bound up in the boy's life. If we return without him, 
As soon as he sees that the boy is not with us, he will die, and your servants will bring down the gray hairs of your servant, our father, with sorrow to Sheol. I told my father, if I do not bring him back to you, then I shall bear the blame before my father all my life. Through this testing, we see that Judah really touched his father's heart. It is also Judah doing all that he can for Benjamin, even laying down his life. In the past, the way Judah harmed Joseph, the way Judah tricked his father, the way he unfairly treated his daughter-in-law Tamar, and the way he thought he was righteous. Over these 20 years, Judah has changed. Now he does what he says. He cares about his father's life. He cares about his brother's life. So when he goes to fight for Benjamin, in verse 49, you can see how the Messiah will come from the bloodline of the tribe of Judah. We, we can see how Jesus gave up his own life for our eternal life. Judah would rather give up his own life. He didn't even know if Joseph would be willing to let Benjamin go. Simeon had been put in prison for half a year to t maybe up to a whole year. Judah didn't know how long he would potentially be put in prison. It is possible that for the crime of stealing, he would have been decapitated. But Judah cared more about his father's life, about his brother's life. So Judah drew closer to Abba Father's heart. Dear family, in every testing that we face in our circumstances, you may feel you are unlucky, especially when you encounter some unfair treatments in the marketplace, in your family. In these situations, you might feel you aren't treated fairly. Judah knew that his father cared about Benjamin, and if, if Judah was actually imprisoned and died, Judah knew that at least his father's heart would be comforted because Benjamin went home. Judah's actions were not comfortable to those around him, but Judah cared about his father's heart, the father's love. In the church and in the marketplace and so on, why can't we start to, for the sake of other people, do all you can, not for yourself, but for their life, for their needs, for our brothers and sisters' needs. Let's do our best to pray, to offer, to serve, and so on. Then we touch our Abba Father's heart. Why did Judah keep touching his father's heart? It was to bring comfort to his father's heart. So later, Jacob's blessing for Judah was for God's glory and authority to be on him. God wanted all of the 12 brothers, the 12 tribes, to fulfill the calling that God has for them. Do you know that in your home, in your small group, in your church, and in the marketplace, you're God's son and daughter? God wants you to step into your calling and destiny. But are you willing to step up? Are you willing to satisfy God's heart through the way you act, through the way you sacrifice? For the fullness of others, are you willing to shepherd, to care for, to place others' needs above your own? Judah was able to step into his calling and destiny. Benjamin was kept safe. Simeon also returned safely. Through this, Joseph also got to know his father more. Jacob doesn't lack anything. When Jacob and his family faced the famine, it was God's perfect arrangement. Do not fret because wicked people thrive. Thank God for every experience. God is taking away things, but for Jacob, he actually lost nothing. Jacob had to just let go. When he let Benjamin go, he got Benjamin back, and Judah, and also Joseph as well. Sometimes when you let go, God is able to bring the things that you lost and restore it all back to you. Today we can pray, God, bless me, help me to trust in your will. I am willing to let go, to trust in your perfect plan and arrangements. I am willing to satisfy Father God's heart through the way I sacrifice, through the way I pray, and through the way I serve. Amen.